Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today on the My Bourbon Journey Whiskey Review Channel. So Four Gate Whiskey Company, they are at it again. So again, I'll make no bones about it. They are one of my absolute favorite companies. I love exactly what it is they do, how they do it, how transparent they are with everything. So this is one of their newest releases, which is their either release or batch number nine called the Andalusia Key. Uh, this is coming in, I'll go through some of the particulars here in a minute. Uh, the proof on this one is coming in at 121.2 proof or 60.6% uh, ABV. Mash bill on this, so this is where it starts to get a little bit um, kind of interesting and they, they, they are masters at blending. So what this is, so they have in this blend basically all Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey ages six, nine, and 12 years old. So what they are, and it's all three of them are all from basically different distilleries. So one of the mash bills um, for the six year is gonna be the 78% corn, 10% rye, 12% malted barley. The nine year is gonna be 75, 13, 12. Again, this is all gonna be uh, corn, rye, malted barley. And then finally, the 12 year is 74, 18, eight. And what they did was with this, it's gonna be a 60-40 uh, blend of, of these. And 60% of this was of the nine and 12 year, which they finished in the Oloroso sherry barrels. The other 40% is gonna be the six, nine and 12 year, uh, all aged in the dark rum casks. So hopefully you got all of that. I'll try to have all of the other information again linked in the description below. Before, uh, below. Again, it is very complex in terms of their blending, their ages of the whiskeys. And one thing I, I always appreciate that, you know, that Bill and Bob and everybody involved do is they start out with great base bourbons. So it has to start there. Um, so when they're using great bourbons to blend with all of these other interesting type of, of casks, like the, the, the Oloroso Sherry and now the dark rum casks, you know, you're starting out with a great base. So um, going back to this, um, again, it is non-age stated. They do uh, no, no chill filtering uh, at all. And the MSRP on this is gonna be right around $200, which is a pretty standard or typical uh, price point uh, for them. So, all right, with all of that said, let's go ahead and get into the review. So I'll start out first with the color, get into the, uh, the nose, and then we'll, uh, we'll hit the palette with, uh, with what we've got uh, then. So, all right. Color-wise, you can see this is a very, very deep, rich, almost mahogany uh, type of color. Again, picking up a lot of that influence of both the sherry and the dark rum casks uh, for sure on these. So, and again, you've got a nice, you've got nice aged bourbon on all of these. Minimum six years, oldest being the 12 year uh, bourbon in here. So, all right, let's get into the nose here. Oh. So my first thought right away is this like rich, like decadent toffee uh, type of note. Really rich, like sweet oak that's there. Uh, definitely some of those brown sugars or like molasses, probably the influence from the dark rum casks. Really nice dark rich fruits. Um, and probably a very, very strong like creme brulee, um, almost where you've got that toasting on the, on the top of it. Um, got a nice little citrus note that's there, probably more of like an orange citrus. Um, one thing I would say is you go back to this very, very rich, <coughs> this very rich bourbon note. You can tell there are some bourbons in here that have got some age to them. You just get that complexity that you get with a really nice, rich, aged kind of bourbon. Definitely some baker's chocolate. So you get a little bit of that kind of like slight bitterness uh, from the chocolate, but you know it's still kind of like a, a chocolate type of note. Maybe maybe even like a, a dark chocolate a little bit, just not as sweet. A touch of cinnamon that's there. 
Um, and here for me now is where the sherry influence starts to kind of come out a little bit. So as I've moved it around in the glass a little bit, kind of allowed it to open up a little bit, the sherry now for me is starting to kind of come out a little bit more. Wasn't there right away. And even when I got the sample, I kind of cracked it open, tried it a little bit, let it open up. And it was still kind of, again, the sherry part was muted until it kind of sat. Now for me, this glass specifically, I've had sitting out and open for maybe upwards of about 10, maybe 15 minutes. So I let it open up, get a little bit of air to it. But yeah, definitely some of that, that sherry starts to kind of come forward a little bit. Ah, great baking spice on this one. Uh, even a touch of like some black pepper there right at the, right at the end. Maybe even a little bit, little bit of um, a butterscotch aspect to it. But yeah, hit like for me right away, the hit was the dark rum cask. You got a lot of that brown sugar, molasses, a little bit of that like car uh, caramel creme brulee type of stuff. And then a little bit later on in the nose, you know, kind of came some more of that sherry influence. All right. But more importantly, let's, uh, let's see how this one, this one tastes. Cheers. Yeah, so for me right away, again, very, very similar to the nose. The the heavier dark rum is is much more of an influence. Now, for me, rum is a little bit, especially some of the heavier dark rums, the really nice rums, are very intense, rich, and it will will kind of dominate a little bit the sherry. The sherry sometimes can be very very like subtle. So the rum for me on this has always been very forward um, on this, but you get like very quickly, like some of that, again, that rich creme brulee, like more of a, like you get a little bit of that like vanilla, the custard part, but still also some of the, the char on the top part of it. It has still like a nice rich dark fruit aspect to it. That molasses is, is definitely there. The rum influence is definitely on this one. Again, that fantastic, like rich, like bold oak. You know, when you when you taste a good bourbon that has a really nice oak profile to it, where it's not super dominant, and you just you know it's it's a good oak that's there. That's what I'm picking up in in this one for sure. Yeah, still some of that like lingering, either dark chocolate, maybe baker's chocolate. A little bit more of that kind of, I don't know if it's like a tartness or what that is with like a baking chocolate. It's almost, I hate to say bitter because sometimes people will interpret bitter as just not good, but there's still that kind of like a little bit of a, a baker's chocolate uh, aspect to it. slight dryness and stuff there very typical of what what sherry will do sherry is a very kind of drying um it just it's very dry for me typically on the on the palate so it happens a little bit with with this um but i do get also with the combo here this really nice like sweet almost like pipe tobacco uh note to it as well so it's how I interpret like pipe tobacco is what you smell is kind of what I'm tasting. So pipe tobacco a lot of times or often is very kind of much on the sweeter side. And that's kind of what I'm getting if I was, you know, kind of tasting what I'm, what I'm trying to interpret here. So, but again, overall great spice, again, a little bit of that black pepper wants to come out a little bit. The sherry influence for me has been late on both the nose and the palate on on this one for for sure but nice creamy caramel again that would kind of refer back to a little bit more of the creme brulee and kind of what was toasted on on the top of that and again some of that kind of lingering uh, maybe even orange citrus that's that's there on on this one as well really nice it's got a lot going on i i always appreciate what it is that they do 
from a blending standpoint. I mean, it's what they do the best. And, and again, it kind of shines and shows, you know, in this, in this, you know, ninth release or ninth batch that they've done. So again, they've done a, a really nice job. And, you know, and as you kind of get into the finished part, I'm not going to say it's, it's overly long, probably on the, the medium, you know, medium side of things. But again, you get really a combo of what it is that I've described. You know, a lot of that, you know, still some of the, the rich molasses, a little bit of that kind of, you know, citrus type of note. The sherry influence, again, was kind of late. That rich oak, there's that nice rich sweetness that's there, a little bit of baking chocolate. It's all of what I've described really in the nose and both the palate that kind of translated over to the the finish part of it you know so it's very consistent in terms of the blend which to me signifies that they've done a really nice job with you know the overall blending of all of these these barrels you know together it's a lot going on you know six nine twelve year bourbon then some of it finished in the oloroso sherry some in the dark rum casks so a lot of stuff going on with these and they've done a really really nice job with this so um so with that being said, so more importantly, if you've had the opportunity to try this, I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback on, on this specifically. I always love to hear you know people's feedback again on how, how they enjoy it, why they enjoy it, whatever it may be about the whiskey. That's something I'd love to, to hear back from people uh, on that. So uh, also, if you'd like to uh, follow me, you can on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of those places uh, at My Bourbon Journey. If you'd like to help support or contribute to the channel, you can through my Patreon page, which I'll have linked in the description below. So more importantly, thank you so much for tuning into another one of my reviews. I greatly appreciate that. And always, or as always, remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers. <laughs>